In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most basic and commonly used data structure called an array. What is an array? An array is like a variable. It's a storage container. But unlike a variable, it can contain more than one piece of information or one piece of data. The data that is stored in an array is not stored in an unstructured way. It actually is stored in a very structured way in a sequence or a list where each of the data inside of an array has its own position. And we call the position within an array an index. Suppose we have five pieces of data in an array. We would say that that array has a size of five. Then you might think, okay, then the position would be counted one, two, three, four, five. But like I said before, a lot of the counting within programming usually start with zero. And same goes with the index number. So an index within an array of size five, we would count zero, one, two, three, and four. So it goes from zero to the size of an array minus one. How do we create an array? Creating an array is similar to creating a variable. We need two main steps. The first one is declaration, and the second one is initialization. So within declaration, we need two mini steps, right? So one is giving it a keyword, let, var, or const, and then the second one is giving it a name so that we can easily reference which array that we store our data. The second piece is initialization. This is where it is a little bit different from a variable. With a variable, if we don't want to give an initial value right away on the line where we declare a variable, we can give an initial value within the setup function or within a draw function. With an array, we can do that as well. But if you don't want to give an initial value, you need to still tell the computer that, hey, this is not a regular variable. This thing that we're creating is an array. And you can do that by writing a square bracket. So let's see how we would do that. Let's say that I want to create an array and my array is going to be named ARR. And I don't want to give it an initial value. So I will just put in a square bracket with nothing inside. And then I'm going to print ARR. And let's see. The computer prints out a square bracket here just to say that ARR is of the type array. So what if now we put some data inside? So I put the number from 500 to 100. So there are five pieces of data in here, right? So let's print. What do we see? In the console, it actually tells us, hey, ARR has a size of five, right? And then it actually prints out what's inside. But if you look underneath here, you can see that what are these? Zero, one, two, three, and four. These are index numbers, right? Zero is the index number for 500. 1 for 400, 2 for 300, 3 for 200, and 4 for 100. So I want to show you now how you would access data within an array. But before that, let me create another variable, just a regular variable cost sized. I'm going to put in 100 here. And then I'm going to draw an ellipse that is in the middle of the screen. And then I'm going to use the variable size to indicate the size of that ellipse. For you to access the data from a variable, you just put the name of the variable there, right? But with an array, let's say that we want to use this piece of data, the same 100. But an array, you need to know which position is this piece of information is stored. So this is the index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, and index 4, right? So we need two things. The first thing that we need is we need the name of an array, and then we need a square bracket, and then we put in the index of that information. And you do the same thing for this. And if I click play, nothing changes because we still just used the data of 100. But then let's say now, I'm gonna delete this first. I want to draw five circles and I want to use five pieces of data in here. So what I can do is that I can copy and paste this five times. You might know that this is not the most ideal way, but let's try it, right? So what I'm doing here is that I am drawing five circles 
And these five circles have the same x and y locations, but they all have different diameters, right? And the diameter here, we're just taking the data from an array called ARR. Let's play. Okay, so now what do you see? You see five circles with diameter ranging from 100 pixels to 500 pixels. But we do not want to write code like this, right? Because why? Because we're just copying and pasting. So what can we do? And we already learned this. We can use a loop structure. And the loop structure that I'm going to use here is actually the for loop. A for loop and an array are very closely related. In what way? Let's try this. So let's say I say four, let i equals to zero, i less than five, right? We want to draw five circle, i plus plus. And then, do you notice now that actually how we indicate the index from zero to one to two to three and to four is exactly the same as the counter variable that goes from i equals to zero to i equals to four. So instead of just writing the number here, we can just change this to i. Then we delete this, we click play, and we get the exact same thing. So this way, you can draw as many circles as you want, depending on the size of the array that you have. But now, the number five that I have written here, it's a hard code, right? Meaning that let's say if I put in 10, what would happen? Okay, so the circles are still drawn the way that we want it to be drawn, but the computer is telling us something, something is wrong. Ellipse was expecting number for the third parameter received an empty variable instead. If not intentional, this is often a problem with scope. The problem right now is actually that it is telling us that, hey, I want to draw you 10 circles starting from i equals to 0 to i equals to 9. But there's no information within this array. The array here only has a size of 5. So instead of doing this, what we actually want to do is that we want to set a condition to be less than the size of the array, right? And we can do that by just easily just put the name of that array, a dot, and the word length. And now there's no error. Let me just quickly print this out to show you. ARR dot length is equals to five. An array is a very useful data structure to use in many, many cases. I will show you in the next video how you can decrease and increase the size of the array throughout the program.